طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبين السعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيد الخلق أجمعين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد Uh, today we are going to talk about the standardized mammographic reporting uh, passing through the previously described uh, lexicons, uh, abnormalities or the abnormalities in the SCR lexicons. I will try to review uh, some of, uh, of which while we are doing or, or we are discussing the structured mammographic reporting. Okay. The American College of Radiology 1992 developed the pre, uh, reporting system, the pirate lexicons for mammography. And uh, the latest update is the fifth edition 19, uh, 2013. Uh, so you know what is BIRAT, the abbreviation for breast imaging reporting and data system. And this is a common uh, language defined uniform descriptive terminology, terminology or the lexicons used to describe findings in mammography as well as MRI and ultrasound breast uh, from different institutions. Uh, is designated to standardize breast imaging reporting. This will redu redu reduce confusion in interpretations and facilitate outcome monitoring. Uh, all other previously used system were abundant. Why? Because unlike BIRAD, lacking quantification and evidence-based, and the BIRAD reporting system is designed to provide an organized approach to image uh, interpretation and reporting, having standard way of reporting mammographic, uh, let the doctors use the same word and term that ensure better follow up of suspicious findings and also help in uh, giving a quality assurance, uh, helping uh, in reporting uh, quality assessment. So what is what is a lexicon? The lexicon is a book containing a clearly defined vocabulary uh, list used to a person in language or in a branch on lang or, or on knowledge. Okay, to ensure that when group of people use the same term, the terms means the same thing for every individual person in the group. So. As you know, the mammographic lexicons, okay, including the breast compositions, certain descriptions for, for, for descriptions for breast compositions and describing certain type of abnormalities uh, seen on mammography, which are the major four abnormalities, including the mass, asymmetry, architectural distortion classification, as well as uh, uh, associated feature and special findings, special uh, cases. And for each this abnormality described by certain or having <laughs> certain descriptors. See, when uh, use it, everyone anywhere in the world will understand you are talking about specific uh, uh, lesions or the lesions definitely you are describing is going to be uh, in a certain category, having a certain uh, management. Okay, so the report organization, uh, it should be concise and structured, uh, containing various descriptions for indication of the study, then describe uh, press composition from A to D, and clear description of important findings, as we described before, uh, including mass asymmetry classification distortion or associated uh, and or associated findings, and then compare it with previous study to conclude into final assessment category accordingly give uh, management recommendation. And in case of unsuspected finding, we have to communicate with the referring physicians. So starting by the clinical indications, 
uh, mammogram performed in two settings, as you know, uh, either screening for high risk women or for average risk women after age of 40 or in a diagnostic setting. And for patient management purposes, breast disease is classified into clinical or symptomatic uh, uh, symptomatic cases versus screening detected lesion cases. Okay, so our report should start it by the clinical information or the indication for the study, provide a brief description for that indications, which may be screening for asymptomatic women or diagnostic mammography for certain indications. What are the indications for the mammographic diagnostic mammography? Do you know? When we do a diagnostic mammography, what are the scenarios uh, huh? for which diagnostic mammography is performed? Uh -huh. Breast lumps. Okay, clinical abnormality or symptoms. We have to recommend uh, to uh, repeat this view, okay? And report it as para zero. If you look for this image, you see, looking for the technique, definitely these are CCBU for the same patients when the breast is bolt, you see, adequately bolt and the nipple seen here in profile, we could depict the posterior uh, cancer missed in the inadequate CC view on the left side. And if the patient has implant, we have to uh, remember to do both view, the implant in place and implant displaced view or the standard view while the implant uh, as it is in, in, uh, in the normal uh, place, then the technicians uh, pushing the implant to inside, see, and pull the breast parenchyma, like in this view, so we could appreciate most of the parenchyma, or we could see most of the parenchyma away from the implant to see for any hidden lesions. And this is, should be stated in the mammography report. And if you use a uh, computer aided detections for, uh, for the mammographic evaluation is also being stated in the report. Okay, after that, we make sure we have a good quality image, then we have to comment on the uh, breast compositions. And previously, you see in the previous editions, they used to use the uh, percentage volume of the fibroglandular parenchyma, you see, to describe the breast density starting by SCR1 when the fibroglandular uh, breast is less than 25%, reflecting entirely fatty breast. And when the fibroglandular parenchyma is 25 to 50, scattered into the breast. Uh, uh, within the breast, they, they describe it as SCR2 or scattered fibroglandular parenchyma. And when it is 50 to 75%, it was described as heterogeneously dense or SCR3. And if it is more than that, it will be extremely dense or SCR4. At that time, these are my cases. Uh, the reason I brought these cases is because uh, it was difficult to me to apply for these cases or some of these cases, I, I found difficulty to apply certain SCR uh, breast density. If you look for this, yes, I might put SCR2, the breast parenchyma between 25 to 50 and it's and, and scattered uh, into the breast and I could see through this and the sensitivity uh, is reasonably low. But same percentage of the parenchyma here, 
you see it is compact it is qualis in a more denser while the volume or percentage of the parenchyma is more or less the same and if you look for this also the same but it is a little bit more denser and for this it is even less it is less it is it is about 10 percentage or, or even less but it is dense and complex and it can obscure underlying regions and for this also it is less than 25 even but it is a compact disc in the upper outer breast and definitely if there is non-classified lesions can be hidden by this uh, by this uh, dense parenchyma and this already there is a lesion here i could appreciate it on ultrasound so at that time i used to write you see to put a phrase or a sentence i i mentioned that in spite uh, the parenchyma within this breast is about 25 to 50 or even less than 50 but it is located is uh, it's seen as a dense or a compact or coalescent uh, dense located in the upper outer or located that might obscure allegiance and if you look for this one it's also it's heterogeneously it's supposed to be heterogeneously dense between 50 to 75 but look for this uh, the brinkima is attenuation the density of the brinkima or the attenuation effect of the brinkima is less it is less dense than the same amount here and for this even it is less than this but it is patchy in certain area it is more dense and it is more complex it is more complex so there are many rather than just the volume of the uh, the percentage or volume of the parenchyma within the breast. Again, these also my cases. You see, if you look here, this is it's supposed to be SER2 at that time, but definitely now these are you reported as SERC corresponding to SER3, while this is still it will be SERB uh, or SER2. Why? more or less same amount or same percentage of the parenchyma, but this is heterogeneously dense while this is scattered. But it depends for many factors. And if you look, these also my cases, you see, look for the amount of the parenchyma. This is almost occupying the whole breast with paucity of the fat. Look for the subcutaneous fat, erythromamary fat. There is even lack of the fat or the very thin layer of fat, there is paucity of the fat, while the fatty layer here is very thick, but it's still the amount, the amount of the parenchyma or fibroglandular tissue is much less compared to this one. But if you look for the area occupied by fibroglandular parenchyma itself, the smaller one is more denser or giving more attenuations or more density more attenuation for the X-ray and increasing density than the larger one. See, so previously this it was SER3 and this is SER4 by the percentage of the parenchyma. But according to density and masking effect of the lesions, now both are reporting as SERD. Again, these all are my cases. I used to present it in the lectures, even before this, uh, the fifth editions, reflecting this problem. And if you look here, the amount of the parenchyma occupying the same area, but this is there is good fat or good amount of fat within the parenchyma. See, make it less dense and better visualizations through it while this is not and the same for the other examples. Okay, so it is not uncommon for some areas in such breast to be relatively dense while the others are primarily fatty. And a few coalescent area of dense tissue may be present 
and breast with, lit with as little as 10% okay, dense tissue, while primarily fatty okay, areas might be seen within uh, a breast having more than 90% dense tissue. When this occurs, according to recent okay, latest edition recommendations, after they observed, uh, the radiologist, press radiologist, having all these observations, they describe this and they recommend a second sentence, okay, to uh, for a second sentence uh, to describe the locations of the denser tissue, so as to reflect for the clinicians and to let him aware that there is this area might obscure and uncalcified small lesions, okay? And the suggested wording for that uh, recently in the latest editions include the dense tissue is located anteriorly in both breast or in, uh, uh, or in upper outer quadrant or in certain area while the remaining breast is fatty or it is located anteriorly and the posterior part of the breast is mostly fatty. Uh, they described recently. And they are giving these examples. You see, if you look, same, this is the SCR example as I, I, I have shown in my cases. You see, the amount of the ring in here or the percentage is more than 50, while here is less than 50. Suppose this uh, historically to be SCR2, while this is to be SCR3. Uh, but if you look for the parenchyma within this certain area, this is heterogeneously dense, and this is heterogeneously dense, regardless of the amount or the percentage of the parenchyma. So currently, for both, we have to report it as composition C. You see? Do you got it? OK. So uh, in uh, the latest editions, the percentage is this, uh, discord, discouraged uh, because in individual cases, it is more important to take into account the chance that the mass can be obscured by fibroglandular parenchyma than the percentage of breast density as an indicator for uh, breast cancer risk. Okay. Also, important point uh, they change or they, the, the, they change the assignment or the assignment terminology uh, from the one, two, three previously, so as not to confuse with the, AB, with the number of the assessment category. You know, the assessment category from zero to six. When you say breast density from one to four, it might get confused with the categories assessment. So in the, in the latest editions, they uh, change this number into a letters. And instead of being the density one, two, three, becoming A, B, C, and D. The one is corresponding to A and four corresponding to D. And as you know, uh, the breast composition is fat, gland, and connective tissue or fibrous tissue. And the fat, you see, is not absorbing, much absorbing the X-ray, so it appears as black, while the fibroglandular tissue absorbing the X-ray, that is why it results in opaque or whitish uh, appearance on mammography. So the more fibroglandular, the more attenuation and the more opaque. And these here are the four categories, A, B, C, and D, you see? And this is definitely the more fatty, no, attenuation of the x-ray and it is the most sensitive type of mammography unless 
the lesion is uh, uh, is uh, occur outside the field of mammography. Otherwise, is the highest sensitivity for the study. And the sensitivity definitely is going to decrease uh, after after uh, U, B, C, and it will be least in D. The B previously or historically it was scattered fibroglandular densities, but at current described as scattered areas of fibroglandular density. The density reflecting the attenuation of the X-ray. And this is, as before, is heterogeneously dense, and this is extremely dense, which having the least sensitivity. And usually, and this is, uh, uh, is subjective, you see, reflecting or assessed, assessed by visual estimation of the radiologist. Though currently, they have some automated approach, but mainly we are using this composition based off on visual estimations of the radiologist, and it depends on the experience of the radiologist. And definitely there are some uh, inter-observer uh, variations, you see, especially between the two close uh, type of density between entirely fatty and scattered or scattered and uh, heterogeneously dense or between heterogeneously dense and extremely dense, you might find one radiologist reported like this and the others. And they used to, to use the sky, okay, uh, as uh, to, to reflect the mammographic density. If you look here, this is definitely the clear sky, like a fatty, uh, a fatty breast, and with some clouds and more clouds, and almost the sky is full of clouds like this dense breast. And uh, the percentage of women having extremely fatty breast found to be about 10%, and those having extremely dense is 10%, while those in the middle representing 40%. So half of the, of the women having high density breast and having, having uh, have uh, better sensitive and relatively fatty breast. Okay, if you look here, definitely this white spot is easy seen in contrast to black fatty breast, while in the uh, dense breast, we need to do an effort to look for this area of white spot on background of white parenchyma. Again, this is definitely, this is small cancer, easy. We visualize, appreciate it in this fatty breast, like in this clear sky, while definitely in this cloudy sky, even a full size moon is it will be obscured by the cloud as in this dense crest. But if the lady uh, is lucky, okay, uh, uh, can the cancer can be present in the area, the fatty area in the background of this extremely dense crest, like this moon is seen in the clearer part of the sky. Uh, in the clearer part of this cloudy sky. Can you see an abnormality in this uh, mammogram? This is our nurse uh, has 55 year old, has having left, sorry, not right, having a bulbable abnormality or pain, pain for, for, for three years. Can you appreciate any abnormality in this dense breast? I think there is asymmetric uh, density noted at the medial side, posterior breast. Here or here? At or the medial. Here? Medial. Here? Yeah. No, anterior. Just anterior. Here? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Well done. Yes. So, Look, this sizable lesion obscured in this 
dense crust. Yes, it's, it appears as some asymmetry here, yeah, but not is difficult, very difficult to be appreciated. Not everybody could visualize this uh, area so easy. The most dense breast, the largest the lesions, or the denser the breast, the larger the lesion or the lesions that may be obscured. Huh. Can you see any abnormality in this mammogram? Or you pass it as a normal? Uh, the rounded area. I tell you, in the if I tell you asymptomatic, if I tell you she's asymptomatic lady, you will pass it? Rounded area in the middle zone. Middle zone? Here? No, anterior. Here? Upper? Upper? Here? Upper. Above Here? This. More above? Here? Yeah. Uh, if I'll tell you, I did not bring the other, the other mammogram, the contralateral breast, but uh, if it is the same in the contralateral breast, then it is yes, you might you might say you might say this area relatively denser for the re remaining of the breast. But I might tell you this area is also denser. But you are right, at the same location, they are all these lesions. But even retrospectively, could you yani, explain? If I tell you these lesions is down. It's difficult, even if it is hydrogenously dense, but definitely. This is even retrospectively, is difficult to be appreciated in this dense mammography. These are my cases. Okay, so mammogram of dense breast, okay, with a higher proportion of fibroglandular tissue, an obscure sign of breast cancer and on screen film as well as fulfilled digital mammography, about half of the cases of breast cancer can be passed and detected. As well, the dense breast considered to be moderate risk for breast cancers. Mammogram can detect breast cancer with variable sensitivity ranging from 63 to 98% percent, but can be as low as 30 percent in a dense breast, as you know. Okay. If one lady asks you, if I have dense breast, do I still need a mammogram? Do I still need a mammogram or a mammography study? Yes. To her? Yes. Yes. Why? Yes. Uh, be yes. Yes. Because, uh, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, there is uh, some situation uh, like microcalcification detected only in uh, mammography. Yes. 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 Most, most, pre most breast cancer can be seen on mammogram, even in, in women who have dense breast. And as you know, mammography is the only modality proven to reduce mortality from breast cancer up to date. So it's still important to get regular mammogram that can help uh, save a woman's life. Okay, if you look for this dense mammogram, what is the abnormality? Pictoralis. Huh? The abnormality, the which area. side, which side, which side, right or left? Left. Left. Him? Yes. Yes, yes quickly. Yes, left. Uh, inferior, inner. Inner, inferior, excellent. Yes. The mammography here, this is multicentric invasive ductal carcinoma associated with high grade BCIS. You see? It's seen, it's diagnosed uh, in this dense 
mammography. And if you look here, this is huh, regular screening mammography demonstrate what developing cars developing asymmetry in a case of early detected invasive cancer and the patient she's lucky she's lucky why as the cancer is evolving in a fatty area in the fatty area like this small moon coming in the clear area in this cloudy sky. Definitely, if it's coming here, you could not visualize it, you could not see it. But being seen in the clearer part of the sky in a background of black is clearly appreciated, like in this small developing asymmetry coming in the background area of fat, so it's easy appreciated and detected early and that is why even in a dense breast still she need to do mammography and nowadays the use of tomosynthesis 3d has been increasing uh, increasingly incorporated for both screening and diagnostic purposes to overcome limitations of dense mammography and improving uh, breast cancer detection as seen in these cases. If you look for this, you see, uh, look for this mammography and the 3D. If you compare it even here, it's really difficult to be appreciated as in this example, also appreciated in the 3D in retrospectively. Here, barely seen in the 2D, but more appreciated in the 3D and the same for this example. However, as I understand from one of the experts, a breast radiologist, uh, she said that uh, the 3D is working in, the, in type C, but doesn't work uh, or doesn't work much or helpful in this type of extremely dense breast. Okay. Uh, then let us go for mammographic abnormality. And after we describe the indications and the compositions, we have to look for any mammographic abnormality to be described in our reporting. And as you know, we described before, the lexicon include main abnormality, which are mass asymmetric classification and architectural distortions, uh, as well as the associated features and then describe their locations and size and so on. And there are special uh, cases. So starting by the mass. Okay, can you remind me uh, what is the mass? Do you remember what is the mass? Those who attend the lecture of the mass? Yes. Huh? 3D um, space occupying legion that is seen in two uh, different right. views and it has um, conspicuity and convex border. Excellent, well done. Yes, uh, a mass is a space occupying legion, three dimensional, that uh, giving a mass effect into adjacent structures. It has a consistent shape into orthogonal view, having partial or uh, complete convex outward borders. And then at the center and, okay. And uh, if potential mass seen in a single projection, we call it as asymmetry until fulfill the criteria of a mass to be uh, described. Okay, so if we have a mass, we have three, descriptors which are, as we mentioned, density and morphology, including well, including shape and margins. margins. Shape and margins. Regarding the shape, we have regular, rounded and oval, as well as irregular. So oval, by rat, it will be by rat. 
you know, you know, for all descriptors, for all descriptors, we have positive predictive value. You see, mm. that will help us when we go for for assessment. You see, when we go, that is why I brought, I tried to review for you the the descriptors of abnormalities because when we go to assessment categories, at at least, yani, we should know each uh, lesions uh, by certain descriptors having a positive predictive value, we could um, assess or we could assign it or we could code it for certain categories. So oval, this oval, so it's supposed to be? Three. Three, excellent. This is bar three. And this is rounded, it will be? Mm -hmm. Quickly. Uh, we have, also uh, three. Mm -hmm. Three, excellent. So oval, oval and regular shape, oval. And rounded, it will be by rat three. While irregular, it will be by rat. Huh? Four. Yeah, four. Four or four. Regular four. Four what? Four what? Yes, you're right. Four. Huh? 4C. Excellent. Excellent. 4C. It is 4C. It is a 4C. So if you have an irregular mass without any associated features, it will be by rat 4C. Put it in your mind. Okay. So this is by rat 4C. When we go for the margins, it will be circumscribed by rat three, obscured by rat three, indistinct by rat four C. Are you sure? Indistinct. Mm, no. Indistinct uh -huh. for B. For B. For B. Uh, it's for B. It's forty-four percent. Microlobulated. Huh? 4C. Microlobulated. It's 4B. Who said 4B? Sarah. Ah, Sarah. yes, excellent. 4B. Is it more, mm -hmm. more, more suspicious than or less suspicious than in mm -hmm. Which it one is 67. more microlobulated uh, or indistinct? Microlobulated, it was 60 something. Person. If it is six or something, it will be four C. Uh huh. So. Dara, she said four B. She's correct. It is four mm -hmm. B. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so. Less yes. Then, yes. It is seven, only only seventeen. Only seventeen. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. The, more, the indistinct is more suspicious than microlobulated. And what about the speculated? In speculated is viral. Is viral? Um, um, no, five or uh, four C. Who said, who said five? Suspicious. Who said uh, five? And Hidi. Yes, you are right. It is five. It is 96. This is the only single characters, you see, given by rat five. The only single characters given by rat five, usually not, not described by rat five or coded by rat five by single character, except for the speculated mass. It has a very high positive predictive value. Okay. What is the difference between the margins in one and two? Uh, in, the one, the margin, uh -huh. in one, the margins are indistinct. Excellent. While, Marina, while Marina. in two is uh, yes. obscured. obscured. Uh, while in two is partially obscured. Excellent. Who, who described? Who is talking? Medina. Medina. Excellent Ayana. Medina. Excellent Medina. Ten by ten. 
Excellent. Yes. Uh, okay. So, what about this 1.5%? 1.4% uh, of this circumscribed group are malignant. As you know, going from circumscribed toward my indistinct microlobulated to speculated going toward the higher, okay, um, suspicions, level of suspicions. But if you look here, this is speculated mass, is invasive cancer, while even this circumscribed equal density are also invasive cancer. See, but we have to be cautious not to label Yani, just being circumscribed uh, as benign lesions without doing a workup and make sure on mommography, ultrasound, and history, and everything is pointing toward benignity. What are the differential diagnoses for the 1.4% of circumscribed? Uh, masses, malignant masses. What are the malignant masses included in this 1.5%? What are the differential? Mucinous. 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 cancer. Huh? Really? You have to just one, two, three, four, five. Huh? Mucinous. Huh? Lobular. Lobular carcinoma. In? Yes. I want to pinch your ear. <laughs> Popular, Yahin. Popular, Yahin. Uh-huh. Intraductal babyloma. We said malignant. We said malignant. The differential diagnosis for malignant uh -huh. circumscribed. We have 1.4% babillary, babillary carcinoma. Yes, mucinous, babillary, huh? What else? Midallary carcinoma. Midallary, excellent. Midallary, what else? Huh? Yes, mucinous, midallary, babillary. Huh? Then remaining three quickly, quickly. Still, we have uh, a lot to be discussed. Huh? Hyloidis, metastasis, high grade invasive ductal carcinoma. Okay? And we said the high grade invasive ductal carcinoma, there is no time, it is rapid proliferating. Cancer with concentric growth, no time to invade. It will appear as oval or rounded mass, circumscribed mass. Okay. Regarding the density, as you know, we have either radio dense or mixed fat containing mass. Mixed fat containing mass, we'll talk later, is benign, while the radio opaque is either low, equal, or high density, high density having positive predictive value up to 70%. So with a high density circumscribed mass, just ball bubble, just you might go for by rat, uh, for, for C. While equal, equal density is by rat 4B, and the cancer is extremely low, but not exclusive from low density. Fat containing mass is mostly benign or almost always benign. These are example of hamartoma with different amount of fat. It is a mass 
we will not call it as a mass, we will call it as, as, we will call it as, developing what? Why developing hint? معلش انا الصوت قطع مني فتره بس ما اعرف كان في شنو معلش قطعت من النت فتره ما اعرف السؤال كان شنو لا النت قطع من عندي انا اه الصوت قطع من عندي اه الصوت قطع ايوه اي النت النت جيف مي ان ستيبل سو ذيس اي سيد ات از سين ات از نوت اي كان نوت سي ذيس از ا ماس بيكوز I cannot, I could not appreciate it in two orthogonal view. So I will call it asymmetry. 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 I'll call it asymmetry. Okay. And mm -hmm. this one I'll call it architectural distortion. Okay. Regarding as, as a, but the main abnormality is asymmetry. Asymmetry. Which type of asymmetry? Uh, this is. Uh, this is. Uh, mm -hmm. Which type? What are the type of asymmetry? Uh, focal asymmetry. Uh, global as focal. Focal asymmetry. Global asymmetry. Developing uh -huh. asymmetry. Type. Okay. This which type? Uh, this is a uh, global asymmetry at the right breast. Global. This is glow global. Right or left? Right breast. Add distortion in the right, it is, it is on the left. The asymmetry is on the left, you see? And it is a global, global asymmetry on the left side. The area of density is on the left side. The added density with distortion and with uh, neighbor retractions. And where, what about this? We call it, huh? This type? Focal asymmetry. Focal asymmetry. And, and this one? Developing when you asymmetry. look here, this is developing asymmetry. This is developing asymmetry. Okay, so we have asym the commonest is the asymmetry, the one seen in one mammogram, and the least is the developing asymmetry. And usually, you see the asymmetry up more than 80% represent summation artifacts or of normal breast tissue. But still, still the asymmetry, okay, if it is persist, can represent or can be seen in up to 10.3%, okay, of screening detected cases. M can see malignancy in up to 10%. So it will be 10.3%. So if it persists, the asymmetry, if it bears it will be barat 4B. It will be barat 4B. And if it is early detected, the likelihood of malignancy is 1.8. So it will be barat 3B. If you have seen asymmetry at the beginning, it will be barat 3. If it bears it will be upgraded to barat 4B. Okay? For global asymmetry, usually, usually it is normal variant bara two in general. But if it is bulbable or associated with additional findings like distortions, like suspicious calcification, can be upgraded to four or even five. Focal asymmetry, the asymmetry simulating the mass, however. It is lacking the full criteria of the mass, the convex outward border, and the central increased density or higher density at the center. But the likelihood of malignancy is even less than the asymmetry, is less than 1%, but it is more than zero. So it will be by rat three. If you have at initial diagnosis, you have focal asymmetry, it will be barat 3. Developing asymmetry is the least common, but the probability of malignancy or the positive predictive value is up to 26.7 from, from 12 
to 26. So it will be by rat for B from the beginning. If you have an initial diagnosis, there is a developing asymmetry, it will be by rat for B. Okay, is it clear now? Okay, the ear, you can see example for Ramas versus asymmetry. If you look here, the center is denser and the border, outward border is convex and occupying lesions. If you have seen uh, the other view, you see, uh, you'll see it in both orthogonal view is a consistent shape. While this is the asymmetry, look, looks like a mass, but the center is not dense and lacking persistent shape in the two view and lacking the convex border. It has a, con a concave borders. Okay, finish the asymmetry going to calcifications. And as you know, the calcification by morphology, we have nine group, typically be nine calcifications from skin, milk of calcium, rod, rim calcification, bone, dystrophic, vascular, round, punctate or sutures. Round and punctate now are joined in one group and the ninth one is a suture classification. These are typically benign classification. If it is not typically benign classification by morphology, then it will be suspicious type of morphology, including the coarse heterogeneous amorphous and fine pleomorphic. The three are representing by rat four B with increasing positive predictive value. The least is coarse heterogeneous and then amorphous and then find polymorphic more uh, suspicious within Bayrat 4B, while the fine linear, fine linear branching represents Bayrat 4C with the highest, higher positive predictive value. This is the coarse heterogeneous and these are amorphic, polymorphic, and this is branching. Uh, this is fine linear and fine linear branching. This is regarding the morphology. Then we have to look for the distributions of this type of suspicious morphology. Starting by diffuse, usually diffuse is Vira 2. Then going to regional, positive predictive value 26 representing Vira 4B and group also representing 4B. Group is a little bit more suspicious than regional, and the most suspicious are linear and segmental. Linear and segmental are by rat 4C, regardless of the morphology. Any type of calcification in linear or segmental distribution you have to put it by that 4C. But if it is regional or group, okay, then you have to look for the morphology. If it is in Barat 4B, it will be still by Rat 4B. But if it is linear branching, okay, morphology in group or regional, it will be upgraded okay, to by Rat 4C because of the most suspicious morphology. Okay, going to architectural distortion. As you know, the architectural distortion, it means the normal parenchyma without presence of underlying mass being distorted. What is the meaning of being distorted? Okay, the contour of the parenchyma is deformed, either retracted, tethered, angulated, uh, getting straight or uh, associated with uh, spicules, long spicules or lines, okay? Uh, pointing to uh, a center which is loosened or combination of contour deformity or contour abnormality along with the speculated lines, okay? We said, Again, the distortion is, it, the main distortion is either contour deformity 
And this contour, it can be at the parenchymal fat interface, the contour of fat parenchymal, but sometimes, okay, within the parenchyma itself, the connective tissue within, inside the parenchyma itself. Either tethered, retracted, angulated, uh, bulging, okay? And what this, all this deformity, uh, contour deformity uh, alone, or with speculation or a speculation alone. You have long specule pointing to a loose and tender. If you have biopsy history of biopsy history of trauma or history of tissue of uh, of uh, tissue biopsy or surgery or trauma, yes, it can explain. If you have no history of this, then you have to make it suspicious or to raise a suspicion for press malignancy. And here, this is the difference between a speculated mass with a dense center, you see a convex border, while this is the center of artificial distortion is usually pointing to more loosened. These are specules, some are associated with asymmetry, but the central part is less dense than the brain. So the associated features are also important. And we'll go through these associated features re related to the skin thickening, uh, parenchymal thickening trabeculation uh, of the connective tissue within the breast and copper ligaments, nipple changes, retractions, uh, thickenings, and lymph nodes and associated calcification, associated architectural distortions, all these having uh, a clinical significance. And when it is present, it might upgrade the lesions, especially if combinations of uh, abnormalities present in the same mammogram, it will upgrade the lesions might be from four to five category assessment. Uh -huh. What about this? Uh, mammogram, can you see the abnormality here? Uh, in the left breast, uh, there is uh, diffuse skin thickening uh, associated with the uh, global asymmetry and uh, 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 thickening of trabeculae. With, uh, excellent. excellent. Huh? This large uh, macro classification is benign classification, most likely mm -hmm. representing involuted fibroadenoma. It's bilateral. Okay, huh? So your assessment, it will be barat? Uh, this is barat 4C. 4C, it's okay. Yes. So when you see an abnormality like this, you have to look for any more suspicious lesion within the breast. There is an area of uh, suspicious microclassification yes. at the. You have to look thoroughly where? At huh? the upper part of the breast, middle. Yes. yes, if you have seen edema, if you have seen this trabecular thickening and skin edema, look carefully within the breast for any suspicious classification, any asymmetry, any masses. This, look here. What about this? There is indistinct mass of equal density yes but even even if it, it is a higher density but because of the edema masking by the edema and associated with most suspicious type of classification this the linear this is the linear, linear type of classification, classification. so it, it will be by uh this is 4c why 4c why for c for C, if you have seen this type of calcification alone, if you you see this type of calcification, calcification. Be, the yeah. calcification associated with interesting mass and diffuse edema, it will be virat five. Now five. you have a lot of you have multiple you have multiple okay abnormalities stacking of abnormalities. So this is a dense, indistinct, irregular mass with calcifications. So it will be by rat five. And even there is some speculations here. It is a by rat five. And look here, 
this is a ductal density with suspicious type of calcification representing a DCIS component of invasive cancer. And these architectural distortions associated with calcification or calcification associated with architectural distortion, also linear type, so it will be by rat. Will be by rat five. It is by rat five. It is by rat five. There is asymmetry, focal asymmetry, with associated architectural distortion and linear type of microclassifications. So it will be by rat five. It is my case. It was invasive ductal carcinoma, and this is trabecular thickening. If you look here. This is so circumscribed mass, but there is a skin and press edema. So it will be by rat? Five also. No. Here I will make it by rat for C. Why? Because it can be an abscess. Oh. It can okay. be an abscess. I'm not sure. Okay. It can be an abscess. See, if uh, uh, it depends on ultrasound. After ultrasound, I might upgrade or downgrade. Mm -hmm. But here I will say, but in the other, in this, this, this is, this I could not see underlying mass. It will be by rat 4C. There is edema. I need to do ultrasound and even go further looking for any lesions here associated with this edema. Because sometimes it can be inflammatory carcinoma, see? And you, you know that the lesion in inflammatory carcinoma are small interconnecting nodules, might not be appreciated on mammography, and even sometimes on ultrasound not be well appreciated, only presenting by, 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 the, by the edema. Uh, on MRI might help uh, to, to, to find this type of small lesions on inflammatory cancer. But it can be for systemic cause, see, uh, the edema itself. I saw it, it will be since I could not see something, a lesions within the breast, it will be by rat uh, 4C. But this is by rat 5, because there is here, there is uh, a mass, irregular mass, hyperdense mass, along with edema, it is um, nipple retraction and this, it is by rat 5. And this is skin changes. This is skin tethering. You see, and retraction in speculated mass. This is by rat five. This is small hyperdense lesions. And this is focal thickening. This it was ulcer. And there is no underlying mass, but that was um, malignant ulcers, you see. And here, there is a lesions with skin thickening and retractions. And there is trabecular thickening adjacently. This it will be by rat four C, unless I have seen the 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 ultrasound upgrading or downgrading. Why? Because periductal mastitis can give me the same appearance, so I cannot go for 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 five directly. Nibble changes or nipple thickening and retractions associated with irregular hyperdense mass, you see, by rat five. And this is thickening and retractions and there is edema here also, you see. And this is in a case of breast cancer again, while this it was uh, a babyloma. So you look for the retractions, how it retract, and these all are small, small babyloma. And this is large babyloma. While this nipple retractions without associated lesions in a case of chronic ductectasia. Okay, this is malignant axillary lymph node. is also considered as associated uh, as architectural changes. You see, and it's obviously here. This is highly suspicious. With a high suspicious, uh, with this indistinct high density mass, it will make it viral. It will upgrade it to BIRAT 5 instead of BIRAT 4. This is after treatment is getting regressing. 
And uh, we described before the special cases we said in primary lymph node and the single or solitary duct and the skin lesions. And for this, we, we no need to describe this lesion just mentioned in primary lymph node or single duct or uh, skin lesions by their locations. And most of the time are representing by RAT2, but it can be as high as by RAT4 or even 5. You know, we described it before when uh, are not typical and associated with suspicious features. So we have to be cautious uh, when evaluating these special cases. And also, uh, we described before for each lesion, which abnormality, whatever uh, mass architectural distortion or asymmetry or gas segregation, we have to describe it by its locations using laterality, right or left, quadrant, inner, outer, lower, upper, and clockwise, as you know, um, from 12 to uh, 12, 3, 6, 9, and so forth. And uh, sorry for that, I get confused suddenly. Uh, preferably, we have to use both the quadrant and clockwise rotation, no, annotations, see? And we have to use uh, the depths, uh, anterior, middle, and posterior. And we said this is a unique for uh, mammography. And the distance from the nipple, this is the most constant type of uh, locations used for between different type of modality. When we use the distance, it is very helpful, you see, and uh, if you use the distance of these lesions from the nipple on mammography, it will be more or less similar on uh, ultrasound as well as on MRI. The most constant uh, locations is the distance from the nipple. And as seen here in this example, this lesions is in outer lower quadrant, posterior depth, four centimeter from the nipple. And what about these lesions? How you describe the location of these lesions? Huh? Hello? Uh, this lesion in the left, outer, uh -huh. outer uh, part of the, of the left breast. Uh -huh. What? I did not uh, hear uh, you. It is in the, uh, this lesion in the left breast in the outer part, uh, in the anterior, uh, depths, the anterior An side of the breast. Anterior to middle, okay. Anterior to middle, it's okay. No problem. Yes. Uh, it is anterior to middle, outer. Yes. Outer Left lower breast. or outer yes. upper? Yeah. Outer upper. Upper outer, okay. Uh -huh. About? Five centimeter from the nipple. Five centimeter. If I ask you by clockwise, left breast, outer, left, upper, outer. Yes, uh, around uh, ten o'clock. Ten, ten is outer in the left breast. Look for the clock. No. <laughs> uh, three, two to three, two, two to even two. Yes, two, about two o'clock. Okay, about mm. two o'clock. Yes. It's about two o'clock. Okay. So the focal asymmetry seen in MLO, MLO and CC, left, middle, upper, outer quadrant, about two o'clock, five centimeter from the nipple. Okay. Also, we have to describe the lesion of that normality by size. For the mass, we have to measure the longest axis of the lesions and perpendicular to that measurements. For architectural distortion, for the greatest linear dimensions, and the same for the calcifications, the extent of calcifications, the greatest 
linear dimensions. And as you know, for the leaf node, the short axis. Okay, this is the lesions here. The longest, the longest, and then perpendicular, not like this. Okay, and the, for the lymph node on mammography, not like on ultrasound to measure the cortex, just to measure the shortest axis. And this is the speculated lesions. You see, don't measure the spicules within that. Measure the index lesion and describe. There are long spicules extending for so and so. Okay. And this here, the measurements for calcification and it should be the same for architectural distortions. And this is the follow up of the case. You see, having the same extent in a benign uh, uh, case of micro calcifications, coarse, coarse heterogeneous calcification of adenosis, while this is the same. Uh, mammographic interpretation is challenging by the fact that the only manifestation of breast cancer might be subtle change on a single view. And the breast cancer might be obscured, as you know, by the density or related to techniques or the size of the lesions or location of the lesions or the histopathologic characteristic of the uh, malignant, malignant type of tumor itself, or there are many factors we'll discuss in the pitfalls of mammography. But because of all these factors, we have to be cautious and we have to have uh, strategies for evaluating and interpreting uh, our study or mammographic study to help us to minimize the false positive and helping us or aid in detection of early cancer. So mammogram of the right and left should be placed back to back as a mirror image for comparison or uh, for compatible projections to compare between the two, CC back to the CC and MLO back to MLO, and then inspect it carefully. And the search is done systematically through similar areas in both press comparing all the times. Proper use of mask, you see, as uh, and bright light uh, <clears throat> was necessarily to detect the skin thickening, as well as trabecular thickening and neighbor attractions, asymmetry, or any other subtle abnormality. Look for the mask here, you see, by looking like this for the same area, you could appreciate any uh, asymmetry between the two sides. Look. Now we could see area of asymmetry with architectural distortion on the right side. See? And even here, I could see another asymmetry, in this case, having bilateral uh, malignancy. Okay? This malignancy and this another malignancy. Also, we can use in the other direction the mask can be used in the other direction like this, looking for different types of, and if you look here, this is definitely some optimal mammography, but by using the mask, make it easy to look for this area of small cancer in the, in the left breast. And also using the mirror image is helping us to see the abnormality in this dense breast having bilateral multiple papillomas. Okay, don't forget to review the forbidden areas in mammography. Be aware for any asymmetry in tabar zone. And if you remember, the tabar zone are subareolar, retromammary fat, apex of the parenchyma in MLO, the inframammary fold and inferior breast in MLO and the medial aspect on the CC view. And this 
erythroma mari, about four, three to four centimeter paralleling the vectoralis, we call it as milk way on the MLO and the erythroma mari fat in the, in the CC and MLO, we call it no man's land. And look, this is my case. Look for this settle, you see? Settle cancer here in the Milky Way. So don't forget this area while uh, reviewing mammography. Can you tell me what's up normally in this uh, mammogram? Uh, there is a skin thickening, area skin thickening. Okay. What and uh, a small, uh, a small uh, lesion at the medial part of the breast. Excellent. There is a small asymmetry or a small nodule in the medial aspect of the breast. I brought this mammogram because of this, because there are many radiologists ignoring these tiny, tiny, tiny nodule, tiny obesities in the press or describe it as scattered or one tiny nodule by a two, like that, because it is tiny. But forget that cancer might start as tiny like this and then getting large. So we have to be aware about these small okay, focal asymmetry. We should not ignore it. We have to look at it and carefully evaluate it. Okay. So after we describe uh, the mammographic abnormality, we have to compare to the previous examinations, if available. And as you know, how it is important, look for these examples, you see, developing asymmetry, in a case of breast cancer. And that is from the literature, but this is my case. Can you tell me here, what is the significance of follow-up in this case? Abir, where is Abir today? I did not hear your voice. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Dr. Arabab. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Huh? Uh, okay, uh, this is animal O. Mm -hmm. uh, just I want to know uh, the sequence. Excellent. What do you expect? What do you expect? Which one is first, which one is second? Because uh, of some. Yeah. Because of what? There is, there is clue that might suggest, and because I have seen clue in the image, I suspect something, but it is not the, the case. Can you see the, the clips of uh, biopsy? Can you obey clips? Yes, this? yes. Can you see it here? Ah. Yes. So, so, uh, so the patient here was diagnosed, and this is the uh, first one. Diagnosed, and here is diagnosed in both. Which one is the first? So I expect, I expect uh -huh. uh, that one on the right of the image. Uh, sorry, that one on the left of the image is the first one. Uh -huh. uh, and that and one this? on the right to be the last one. Uh, uh -huh. Why? Because, why? why? because uh -huh. after they diagnosed, they didn't intervene surgically and they didn't take the lesion or excise the lesion. Uh, maybe it is a benign lesion, so they decide to follow up it. Abir. Abir, no, 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 no. Uh, this, Maybe it is evoluting this or... Is, this is a, this is an speculated lesion. It's speculated. See, or look, look, it's irregular with the speculus. So 
So it is, how come it is being nine? And why is getting less? Uh, new argument, Ms. Arabic. Dr. Muawiyah? Yes, I think she, she received new argument, Ms. Musarabi. Excellent. Yes, I told her we, we, we expect this, this one to be the second because uh, when I have seen the, the clips, that means this patient here is diagnosed and here is already uh, the biopsy is taken. I expect this patient to be, uh, this is the first one and this is both new adjuvant chemotherapy, the lesion is uh, regressing. But unfortunately, that was the first one and this is the second one in a case of medullary carcinoma. But the patient after diagnosis disappeared for five months to come with a larger or with uh, a lesion progressing in size. Statement indicating the current examination has been compared to the previous examination should be included by the specific dates. Okay? And if not included, it should be assumed that no comparison has been made. However, it is preferable if it is not, if there is no comparison uh, being uh, okay you have to mention that uh, in the report.